Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Not a long time ago, I got my hands on these three washing machine motors and couple more which are dismantled. The point of today's video is to try to convert one of them in a DC generator. And how we're gonna do that? Well, it's quite simple. Let me show you. First of all, here we got the motor. This one I will be using to drive the other motor. But before powering it, I have first to make a modification of the wire. And what I have done here, I have cut the wire and putting them together, meaning the stator coil and see this with the armature coil. And if I give it here some power, like so, it will come to life. And if I switch the bobbin, it will turn in the other direction, like so. Further with this experiment, I will be getting the other motor and connecting it to the DVM digital voltmeter and setting it on DC like so and connect only the two brushes of the armature to it and try to spin it by hand. But as you can see, it generates nothing. And if I switch it on AC and turn it, as well, it don't generate nothing. But watch what happens if I bring some magnets onto the mic. It will start generating some voltage. In one way, well, it's basically a DC generator at this point, but not a powerful one. Now to get more, without using permanent magnets, I'll be trying to get some voltage just relying on itself without any permanent magnets. And from doing that, I have to get one side of the multimeter connected to one of the two electromagnets, and then the other one from one of the two brushes, meaning that I have to do the same configuration I did with the other one to be able to power it. In the same way, well, it can output some voltage, and now if I spin it, it will generate its own magnetic field and also it will start producing some voltage. Like you see, it's generating about 20 to 30 millivolts, so it's meaning that it's working as a generator. But now I want to take it a bit further by adding the other motor into the mix and give it some power and in configuration of the belt which will drive the generator, we'll see how much it can produce at a decent speed. Let's move the motor here and making sure it's still connected and as well we got the DVM to show up the voltage and connect them together with the belt and then to power the motor I will be using the same configuration as I told you by using one of the bobbin and see this with the brushes of the motor let's connect it and it's come to life like so and as you can see the generator is producing about 87 milliwatts which is not too much to be fair but at least it's something for such a large motor and if I increase the voltage to about the maximum of my power supply which is 31 volts it will generate about 143-144 milliwatts, which still for such a large motor is too little. But as the motor is revving up in RPM revolution per minute, the voltage as well will start to shoot up. But now look what will gonna happen if I remove the middle connection between the bobbin and the rotor. It will still maintain briefly its magnetic field, but as the time pass and as well the magnetic field collapsing, it will start losing it. Slowly. Now let's get a permanent magnet and stick it on top of it. On this side it does nothing and as well on this side as well it does nothing. Basically what I have to try is to disconnect it first and then add the magnet and then power it all up. It will start generating some voltage on the negative polarity that's why the line is on the DVM and it's going 45, 46 and so on. So the experiments have shown that it's working with permanent magnets as well without permanent magnets. Now I want to take this concept a bit further by removing the armature wire and add some permanent magnets onto it. Something like I did here but this one is just a prototype and still I have to do some more work till it will be fitting properly. But in meanwhile to show that it can generate some DC voltage on its own with so many permanent magnets I come up with a simple idea. Now the magnets what I'll be using they are from a magnet room from some old microwave oven which I have quite few of them. Let's get the other motor. Like I told you I have this mantle and remove the stator coil like that and as well the armature from the rod has the two bearings still attached to it and I'll try to add the two magnets from the magnet room from the microwave oven and use some zip ties to attach the two magnets to the rod which holding the two bearing creating a new rotor a rotary magnet well i know it's not a permanent solution but sometimes temporary solution leads to become permanent solution first i will be inserting the rotor i know it's still there like magnets has to be on this region of onto the shaft let's split the two magnets like that 
Now this part is quite important. Regarding the polarity of the magnets is quite important because if you just place them like that without checking the polarity, it may end up not working. Let me give you an example. In this configuration, they will be attracting and if I will flip them, as well, they will be attracting. Because this kind of magnets, they have the outer edge, one pole and then the two faces, a different pole, meaning north and south, they are just on two extremes. But on two edges, they will be repelling each other, like so. But this is quite a critical part. If you mix up the polarity, in most of the cases, it will not work. Or it may work, but it will be leading to very small efficiency at the output. So basically, you just stick them like that. And then we just get some zip ties. Now it's quite important to balance them out equally, like that it will reduce vibration and as well it will be increasing the stability of our rotor meaning the two bearings will not become overwhelmed and in time will, will develop fatigue in them and will result they will be getting damaged prematurely because the rotor has to be proper balanced now with the two magnets mounted of the shaft i have first to balance them out make sure they are proper balanced and then just use some hot glue and stick it in the two holes creating a somewhat stable region for the two magnets like I said, this is a prototype. After the rotor is completed, we can assemble it back and test it. Now with the motor fully assembled and hooked up to the DVM, we can test it to see how much voltage it's outputting by just turning it by hand. And well, we see we get about 2 to 3 volts, depending how much I spin it, meaning the inertia of it. And we got a strong magnetic field. As you can see here, by trying to spin it slowly, it's trying to center himself out. So we got a magnetic field. And if I spin it, we can get some voltage. And remember, this is AC, it's not DC. Because if I flip it on DC on the multimeter, we generate nothing. So it's AC. So it's not enough. So meaning it's just AC only at the moment without a full bridge rectifier to rectify the output of it. And we get 2.5, 1, 3 volts. So we did it. It's working. So now let's connecting it to the other motor. But before that, Let's jump on one 3D design and design a pulley and after slicing it in Cura went off to the printer to get it done. So now is the time to test it. As you can see here I have combined the two motors together. This one will be the generator which has the rotor reworked with the two permanent magnets. And this one will be the driving motor combination with the belt. And as well here I have a small contraption designed with a full bridge rectifier and some capacitors to act as a buffer and as well to smooth out the output voltage and as well we have the DVM hooked up to show the final voltage the DC voltage in this case so let's start the experiment by first touching on the power supply and raising up the voltage slowly like so and we can see immediately that the voltage starts to ramping up slowly as the motor is revving himself up in revolution per minute at the moment we are at 9 volts but let's increase it to let's say 50 volts and we get about 5 volts and still climbing up. And now if I blast it at 31 volts of my power supply, we can see we're getting about somewhere around 14 to 50 to 60 volts. And what I got here is a small 5 watts LED. And if I connecting it, it, you see it starts to light up. But as you can see, after connecting the load, the voltage has dropped suddenly, meaning that the generator it has some resistance. And we see that the voltage has declined it a bit due to the load. It will eventually settle to about roughly 11 volts at the current setup. But now I have a spotlight. This is a 50 watts at 12 volts. And we can see if I try to load the generator, it will slow down quite a bit and the voltage will fall under 2 volts. But still, it can be powered for a brief moment. As a concept, it's working quite good, I might say. So meaning the experiment is quite successfully. So now I want to take it a bit further by designing another pulley and onto the design and after slicing it, and print it of course we can continue further with the experiment here i have mounted the new pulley which is five times bigger than the smaller one so the ratio is five to one now meaning that the driving motor will spin five times slower than the generator which will spin five times faster than the driving motor now let's power the driving motor from my power supply now we'll be starting to crank up the voltage slowly in steps and at around 11.3 volts we get we're generating some voltage nearly 4.8 and still climbing then 5 volts nearly you can see that the new pulley is working beautifully as it's looking that the motor is spinning quite fast but believe me it's not it's just a artifact of the camera 
showing that the motor is spinning quite fast but in reality is spinning quite slow but the other motor is spinning quite fast and becoming a bit louder like I say still some imbalance with the shaft of the generator but now let's increase a bit the voltage let's say to about 50.3 volts to generating 11 11.5 remember here I have a full bridge rectifier with some smoothing and now it's a bit more stable still some adjustments have to be done but the concept idea in a nutshell it's quite strong at 20 volts we are generating over 14 to 15 volts this motor is spinning quite fast but the other one the generator is spinning insanely fast we got about 60 to 17 which is plenty I may say and now if I get the spotlight and try to load the generator we can see it's lighting it up but still the voltage fall under 2 volts that's something to be tackled now releasing the load the voltage starts to shoot up again and as well the motor is starting to rev up again quite fast and now let's increase the motor to the maximum my power supply to around 31 volts and it's becoming extremely fast the voltage is about 27 28 as the high current in rush and crazy fast this one is moving so slow and the other one is nearly flying from the bench and now let's try again with the load with that 50 watts spotlight it will put a massive load on the dc generator but i think it will be able to start it well indeed it's lighting more up but still it's falling again and the voltage goes even beyond recognized by the dvm let's turn the voltage back down and leave it at 30 to 40 volts and you can see i still have to adjust some parameters regarding the dc generator but in a nutshell i think i nail it we can convert a washing machine motor to a dc generator with some drum back but for the future i think i have to add some new implementation of the dc generator maybe i'll be getting a new pulley a bigger one maybe and as well maybe i will not be relying on this motor to drive the generator and perhaps i'll be using some pure gears same as i use in my doi spray can mixer machine with the handle without relying on a motor to drive the generator we'll see what the future will bring but till then i think the generator is successfully as an experiment so in a nutshell it seems that we can achieve a decent generator from our old washing machine motor and few tricks and few modification and implementation correctly this time will be able to power some higher loads and also it can be further improved by adding some strong magnets or maybe rewiring the two stator coils the two electromagnets or replace them entirely with some magnets and relying on the armature windings to produce the energy will be working as a dc motor with some permanent magnets but as well what i want to implement further is to scrap the idea by using an external motor to drive the generator and better relying on some spur gears with a handle or a bigger flywheel now as an experiment this was quite interesting to build and as well to see that it has come to life and it sees that it's working now i will be going back on the drawing board and see what i can implement further and coming with a new version of the generator motor to make it a bit better as it is in this configuration but this is a subject for another video i hope you have learned something interesting today and i shall see you all the next video till then have a good day and thank you very much for watching see ya